Hello, everyone. Today we're going to talk about the uh, endlessly fascinating topic of sales taxes and what is the difference between zero rated, out of scope, and exempt, and which one do you choose in QuickBooks Online? So in, uh, in the ta Canadian tax code, uh, these are three classifications and they all mean different things. However, the net result for each of these tax codes is that zero dollars of GST, HST, <coughs> and QST where applicable uh, will be added to your invoice or to, you ex to your expense. So, um, the question becomes, which one do you choose and does it matter? So let's talk about what each one means and then I'll take you through a couple of examples. The first one is zero rated. Transactions classified as zero rated are taxable, but at a 0% tax rate. This means that while no sales tax is charged to the customer, the business can still claim input tax credits, which means they can claim back the sales tax that uh, are paid on expenses. So this is particularly applicable to businesses who provide goods or services to customers in the US or internationally, and are similar to goods or services that you would provide in Canada on which you would charge tax. But since international customers do not pay sales tax, you do not have to charge it. So an example of this would be sales of products such as clothing or pretty much any goods that you would charge GST and HST on to your Canadian customers. Uh, and additionally, it also includes services like IT or marketing or accounting that you build to international customers, which similarly you would have charged sales tax on if they were to Canadian customers. Out of scope transactions are those to which sales tax in uh, some sense is just simply not applicable. Uh, and just to note, because sales tax is not applicable to these transactions, you cannot claim the input tax credits, i.e. the taxes paid on expenses. So examples of out of scope transactions uh, tend to be transfers. Transfers between bank accounts, transfer from your bank account to your credit card account, withdrawals, personal withdrawals from your bank account, uh, or any kind of personal transactions really are out of scope because you are not able to claim uh, sales tax on personal transactions uh, and uh, transfers to and from your shareholder loan account, dividends. Those types of transactions are essentially out of scope. And the final classification is exempt. And what that means is for exempt transactions, there is no sales tax charge, uh, and, but unlike zero rated transactions, it is because they are not taxable at the source. So they wouldn't be taxable to Canadian clients and they're not taxable to international clients. Uh, and it, broad examples and common examples of these types of transactions relate to healthcare, education, and financial transactions. So, and, but not in all cases. So if you do, if you have a business that deals in any of these types of exempt goods or services, you do want to make sure that you're aware of the nuances and what aspects of these transactions might actually be taxable. Uh, but that being said, because your transactions are not, your sales are exempt, it also means that you cannot claim the input tax credits, i.e. the taxes paid on expenses, on transactions relating to exempt transactions. So let's take a look at how it works in practice in QuickBooks Online. So let's go to our bank transactions. 
And you'll see here, there are some transactions that have already been downloaded. And we are going to basically take an example of each. The first thing we're going to look at is a zero rated transaction. So let's say we have this deposit. This deposit comes, it's a credit card payment from Intuit. And let's say this sale was made to a international customer. Scotland Yard, they're in, in the UK. We do not charge them sales tax. So we can, from the dropdown, choose what the category is. And uh, we have provided consulting services, so let's choose that. The tax code that automatically appears here because this is connected to consulting services is HST Ontario. Ontario. But in this case, we are going to choose zero rated on sales. And the reason we're going to say no to this, the reason we're choosing zero rated, because if we had provided consulting services to a Canadian client, we would absolutely have to charge them sales tax. But because they're international, no sales tax is required. They are zero rated and zero rated by extension means we can claim back the sales taxes paid on expenses. We'll leave the location in class blank for now. And this essentially is uh, our transaction we can add. So more complexities when you've downloaded transactions, I would recommend um, creating an invoice and matching it to the invoice, but it's a subject for another tutorial. So let's click on add, and that is our zero rated sale. Next, let's look at something that's out of scope. So uh, a transaction that's out of scope, for example, is this. And here we can see this is a transfer from a bank account. So because it's a transfer from a bank account, really sales tax is just not applicable because you wouldn't charge sales tax on a transfer between accounts. So let's take, uh, let's look at the type of transaction. Uh, it's a deposit, uh, but you can also record it as a transfer. And the transfer you'll notice in QuickBooks Online actually just completely eliminates the sales tax code. It's not required to uh, select. Just a note, you can use either one of these. If you were to choose categorize, uh, you could select a payee or not. I'm going to say this goes to the shareholder loan account for Sherlock Holmes. Uh, and he has deposited some money because he has some cash flow requirements. The tax code now is, in this case, it as discussed, it is out of scope. I prefer, I don't know why they have a sales and a purchases. If it's out of scope, it's out of scope. That's just QuickBooks Online. I prefer to choose out of scope purchases so that it does not impact my sales report. If you choose out of scope sales, it will actually show up as a line item on your customer detail sales report and it will add an amount to sales, which doesn't make sense and makes your sales look much higher than they are. So my preference is to choose out of scope purchases for all out of scope type transactions. So you click on that, we're gonna say no. You can say yes, because pretty much anything in and out of the shareholder loan is probably exempt, but there are exceptions, so let's not do that now. Um, and that's it. You could add a tag or uh, other parts of this if you want, otherwise you can simply add the transaction. And the third type of transaction we are going to look at is an exempt transaction. So bank charges, which are a fee that is imposed by a financial institution, is always exempt. And therefore, this is the type of transaction where we will select exempt as the tax code. So the payee could be, this comes from TD. I could select TD as my supplier. The category is bank charges. Um, does not appear here, so I am just going to add it. Uh, and it is an account type, it is expenses, and it is bank charges. So we can save and close that. 
and we have just added a transaction directly through this interface. Customer, um, not applicable here. You can actually toggle this off by going to settings uh, and uh, making sure that this is not this does not show up. And the tax here is exactly what we're talking about, is exempt. And you'll notice on purchases, QuickBooks Online doesn't actually give you an option between sales and purchases. This is simply going to be a purchase uh, tax code. So let's, and this dictates how it appears on your sales tax report. So the way a sales tax report is structured, you have your total sales, then you have your tax on sales, and then you have your tax on purchases. So you want to make sure that the correct type of transaction, i.e. sales or purchases, is selected. So let's select exempt. Uh, we can say yes, Ashley, in this case, because all bank charges will almost always be exempt. And we will add this transaction. And that pretty much uh, reflects how you would add uh, each type of transaction and how you would select it. I do have a blog post about this. It's you know, very similar to what we have discussed, but you can read it just for a better understanding of what the differences are and some examples of transaction types. And also, if you uh, are interested in further reading on this fascinating topic, you can go to CRA's website, just simply select uh, exempt or zero rated in Google, and it will take you to the website. So I hope this was useful, and I hope this at least somewhat answers the very popular question as to which tax code to choose uh, and a, one final piece of advice, if you are unsure, I recommend just simply selecting exempt. Uh, and the difference is not necessarily significant. Uh, it's um, the potential issue uh, that you might have is with a, a Revenue Canada auditor who might be like, well, why did you use exempt and not zero rated? But the chances of that are pretty low. So you can choose exempt if you're unsure, but given the guidance, and if you've watched this whole video, obviously accuracy is better wherever possible. So uh, that's it. Um, please like, subscribe, and let me know if there are any other questions that you have about QuickBooks Online, and I will try and make a video about it. Uh, and for a lot more information for relating to small business, you can visit my website at montrealfinancial.ca, and you can learn a little bit more about me as well. Uh, my consulting services, and uh, I have several books for small businesses. Have a great day.